That's a word for somebody that he knows. I'm a witness. Though the teardrops fall, just keep on toiling because he knows. And when we're at our weakest is when God is at his best. Somebody give God praise. Let's thank God for the pastor's special guests, my son, Isaiah and Raja. Thank you all so much. Thank the choir for the ministry of music this morning. I want to talk for the time that is mine from this subject, tempted in the strong places. Oh God, we're grateful for another opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk to declare your word. Speak, oh God, in a way that your people will be edified and you will be glorified. Help us to be transformed by your presence and by your power. We thank you, O oh God, because we know that we don't walk alone. Now let the collective words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be found acceptable in your sight. It's in the strong name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Let me take this opportunity to see who's coming in. They may want to say, hear the word. Okay. I want to take this opportunity to thank those of you who came to our Ash Wednesday service. It was cold, um, but we had a wonderful worship experience as we began the Lenten season together. And we were reminded that God loved us so much that God breathed his divinity in this dust, and we became living souls. And we commenced our journey with our Lord to Calvary as he journeys to die for your sins and my sins. And just think about it, if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? So this is the first Sunday in Lent, and I want to talk not the usual way we usually talk about temptation, <clears throat> one being tempted at their weakest point. We normally talk about the temptation to sin, although this cannot be ruled out because one of the reasons why we come to church and why we pray and why we meditate is that we know that the adversary is real and in a real sense we were born into sin. You don't have to teach people how to sin. You don't have to teach people how to lie. It just is innate. You have to teach them how to do the opposite. But I don't want to talk today about lying or cheating or stealing or committing adultery and the like. These are all temptations of weakness which all of us have. My weakness may not be yours. Yours may not be mine, but we all got one. I know that's right because the Bible declares that all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone unto his own way. The Apostle John says that if we say we have no sin, we lie and the truth is not in us but I'm glad for the B part. But if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father who is Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. But today I want us to ponder the concept of temptation of strength. The strong places, challenges that we face when everything is going well. These kinds of temptations are much more subtle, much more seductive and demonic. When we look carefully at our text 
or the pretext where our text is found, we learn that the devil does not attempt Jesus to fail. He does not attempt Jesus to succumb to weakness, just the other way around. The devil tempts Jesus to succeed. Jesus, don't you want the common people to know about your power? Imagine if you would just turn these stones to bread. Folk will follow you. I mean, Jesus, if you really are the son of God, you want people to know that. Then just cast yourself down from here. Jesus, I, I know you come from glory and, and the earth belongs to your father, but if you really want to be rich, let me show you something. All of this I'll give you, and you'll be even more rich than you already are. All right, you don't, you don't, you're not feeling me. All right. Some of you make a good paycheck, and you do well. But, you know, if you play this number you're going to get rich. I mean, if, if you have money and you invest in what it is that I'm offering, I don't want to be stereotypic, but you get things that come across the internet for investments from places like Nigeria. You could be lured that you got money, but if you want more money, this is what you have to do. If you will try this portion that I have for you, you're going to be more whole. You know, this is going to work it out, and you'll be all that you need to be. And look, at the point that Jesus is tempted, Jesus is tempted after a mountaintop experience. It's normally when things are going well and, 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 and you've been blessed and you think you got it going on that the devil will tempt you. Here it is. John had been preaching. And he's preaching, but prepare you the way of the Lord. Um, there comes one whose shoes I'm not worthy to unlatch. Um, I will baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And then John looks up, and he sees Jesus. He says, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. Jesus has this dialogue with John. And one thing I like about John is, is John, unlike some of us, John knew his place. And John knew how to humble himself in the face of divinity. Um, because you need to know that when John was preaching, in the beginning, John was more popular than Jesus. People didn't really know Jesus. I mean, John did what he did so well that people came to John in the wilderness. He did what he did so well that it became part of his name, John the Baptist. And I remember one time I had a real major baptism. We must have baptized about 17 people. And I came home and Angela said, here is James the Baptist. <laughs> and, 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 and Jesus said, John, I want you to baptize me. John said, no, um, I, I, I can't baptize. Jesus said, suffer it to be so. And the Bible says that when Jesus was baptized, this is in Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, that there was a voice from heaven saying, this is, God affirms his son, my beloved son, God identifies with his son, and that's why here, there's a whole sermon right there I could do, is that's why Fathers need to step up. And I don't know, this is not part of the sermon, but I'll give it to you for free. I don't know why these women would give these children their daddy's name 
when the daddy hasn't identified with the child and won't support the child. Jesus is identified with his father because his father says, this is affirming Jesus, my beloved son. And then he commends him with whom I am well pleased. So God has already told Jesus who he is. He is God's son, whom God is well pleased. Now you need to know that not all temptations come from the devil. Many times, God tempts us, or God doesn't tempt us, but God tests us because God wants to know if he can trust us. And God tests us to make us strong. And God tests us to see sometimes if he can handle the larger blessings that God has in store for us. Because God knows that if we can't handle the little things, then we will not be able to handle the larger things. I mean, if your child can't handle a thousand dollars, well, you wouldn't turn around and give him ten thousand dollars because you have to prove by going through the test that you can handle the smaller things that God has given you. I read somewhere that when you're faithful over a few things, God will make you ruler over many. Here's our text. Then Jesus, led by the Spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. It was the spirit that led Jesus into the wilderness. It was not the devil that led Jesus into the wilderness. It was the spirit of God that led Jesus into the wilderness. And while he was in the wilderness, he was tempted by the devil. But you see, you can handle demonic forces and evil forces that come against you when you're led by the Spirit, when you're anointed by the Spirit, when the Spirit is in you and you are in the Spirit. That's why our prayer has to be, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Because no man comes to the Father except he is drawn by the Spirit. And one of the things that I would hope that would happen during this Lenten season is that we would have some folk that have been anointed, not with oil, not with a whole lot of stuff that people are saying that's not true, but that they might be anointed by the power of the Holy Spirit. For it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. This is where the devil will come. He will come in a deceitful way and place doubt in your mind over against what God has already said. Now in chapter Three, God says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. In chapter 4, the devil comes to Jesus and says, if you are, the preposition, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to be made bread. This is why you got to come to Bible study. Because the way to deal with demonic forces is with the Spirit of God and the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. And so Jesus hits the adversary with the Word. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that cometh out of the mouth of God. Now, Jesus already knew that he was the son of God, but the adversary wanted to put doubt in his mind. 
at the point of his strength, if you are the son of God. Now, you need to know who you are. Because when you know who you are, you do not allow the devil to take the blessings away from you that God has already given you. And you don't have to prove anything to anybody when you know that you are a son or a daughter of the living God. And so he deals with Jesus. He says, he says they will really follow you. You will be more powerful than you are. Now, we know that Jesus had the power to change these stones to bread. He could do that. But if he were to listen to the devil, he would be given over the power that God had given him to the adversary. He says, I don't have to prove anything to you because I know who I am. And so we know that Jesus could do it because the first miracle, he changed the water to wine. He fed the 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. He had the power and the authority to be able to do it, but he would not violate his sonship and the authority and the power of his father to provide for him because of being tempted by the adversary. I'm just simply saying that God has made us somebody. And so you don't have to be tempted to do drugs. You don't have to be tempted to be promiscuous. You don't have to be tempted to raise your skirt all the way up beyond possible. You don't have to be tempted to have your pants hanging down so that you can advertise Polo and Tommy Hilfiger because you know that the label that you wear is on the inside of your heart. And when you walk into a place, people know who you are because you manifest the presence and the power of God. I'm not going to violate what God has done for me by trying to prove something to somebody who don't even know me, who don't even like me, but I know who I am. For now are we the sons and daughters of God and it does not yet appear what it shall be, but when he shall appear, we shall be like him. How do you know Reverend, that Jesus was quoting the word? Because it's right here. He's quoting out of the Torah. He's quoting out of Deuteronomy 8, chapter 8, verse 3. Man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I make it because of the word of God. Sometimes when I'm weak and I feel that I can't make it, I hear the Apostle Paul declaring, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. I most gladly glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ will rest on me. Uh, sometimes when I feel lonely and totally misunderstood, as I was probably today when I was in a conversation with some leadership of this church, I have to close the door and the word comes to me. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Sometimes when I'm weak and I don't know how I'm going to make it and where the strength is going to come from, the word comes to me. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And sometimes when you feel totally messed up, left out, dejected, and rejected, the word will come if God be for you. He's more than all that can be against you. I like the Women's Day theme. Their theme are, is something like women anchored in the Lord. And as I was putting this together and contemplating their own, my own challenges of life, I found myself seeing that old spiritual um, Sister Mullins. Though the storms in my life keep on raging, my soul's been anchored in the Lord. If you are a person of power, the devil will attempt 
to cause you to misuse your power as he appeals to your ego. Many people find themselves in compromising positions because they abuse the power and the influence that has been given to them. The teacher who finds him or herself in a compromising relationship with a student, it really is an abuse of power. The psychiatrist who's supposed to have the client on the couch for counseling finds himself in bed with the counselor, with the client. It is an abuse of power, tempted at the strong place. Um, David, who became more powerful and popular than Saul, had the opportunity to kill Saul. His men said, there he is right now, you could take him out. But he refused because he allowed himself to be subjected to the authority of God and not to the authority of the power that he had. Well, let me move on. Then the devil took him into a high city, had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will give his angels charge over you. And they will lift you up in their hands so that your feet will not strike a stone. The devil knows the word. For here he is quoting Psalm 91, 11 and 12. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in his charge. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. God can suspend the natural laws of gravity, but we don't. And Jesus shows us, by example, have the right to tempt God. God does not need to prove anything to the adversary whom God has already defeated. And so if you were taking notes in point one, I want to suggest that you need to know that whatever you're going through, God can provide. He will be your provision you don't have to sell out to the adversary. And in this second temptation, he is tempting Jesus at the point of his power and his ego. And the Bible says that Jesus has him to understand that you cannot tempt God because God is God. And finally, the devil will tempt you at the point of prosperity. People who have money will lie, steal, and cheat simply to get more money. If you don't believe that, look at the current occupant of the White House. It all will come out sooner or, or, or later, but the more money people get, the more money they want. And the devil is very deceptive. Here it is. Again, the devil took Jesus to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all their splendors. All this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. First of all, it was not the devil's to give. Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And you need to know that what God has given you is for you. And I've gotten in a place in my life where I would rather have God bless me than people. Because when people invest in you, then they want to manipulate you. And they want to control you. But when God blesses you, nobody can take it away from you. And what God has for you is for you. And I, I'm so glad that, that I have enough Jesus in me that I will not sell out to the adversary. I will not sell out to a contractor who wants to make a backdoor deal with me and say, well, Reverend, you charge them, I'm going to charge you more than what the situation costs, and then I will give you a kickback, but you put in the 
and the invoice that is $2,000, but it's only really going to be $1,500, and then you'll have $500 in your pocket, and nobody will know it. I said, but God has brought me to this place. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel. God will provide. God will make a way out of no way. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you're able to ask or think. And so I'm saying, don't let the devil tempt you at the point of your strength. Don't let him tempt you about what he can provide. Learn to trust God, and God will give you whatever it is that you need. The Bible says that you have not because you ask not. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Don't be seduced because of power or because of influence, because if God knows your name, that's all that matters. What matters is, is your heart right with God? Washed in the crimson flood, cleansed and made holy, humble and lonely, right in the sight of God. We don't sing songs like this anymore, but is your all on the altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest when you yield him your body and your soul. And then finally, don't let the devil have have your worship. Here it is right here. The, the Bible says that um, Jesus says it is written away from me Satan for it is written worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil wants to steal your worship. And I told the devil you can take my provision um, you can take my power. You can take my prosperity. You can take my car. You can take my house. You can take my friends. But you can't take away my worship. Because when you worship him, healing comes. When you worship him, he takes the heat out of the fire. When you worship him, he shuts the lion's mouth. When you worship him, he'll add more years to your life. I hear Hezekiah, and the Lord sent the angel and said, tell Hezekiah, this very day, his soul will be required. Hezekiah began to tell God how good a king he had been, how he had tried to be righteous and seditious, but the Lord did not hear him. And then um, Hezekiah said, Lord, I just want you to know, the grave cannot praise you. The grave cannot worship you. God said, what you say? I said, the grave cannot worship you. The grave cannot praise you. God said to the angel, you go back down there and you tell Hezekiah that if he's going to worship me, I'm going to add 15 years to his life. I love the Lord. He heard my plea. Pity every groan. When trouble comes, I worship him. I praise him. You got to praise him when you're on the mountaintop. You got to praise him when you're in the valley. You got to praise him when your loved ones die. You got to praise him when you're sick in your body because he inhabits the praises of his people. God dwells in the praises of his people. The Bible says, the Bible says that when the two men Going down the Amias Road, they were talking. Every now and then, you got to talk about Jesus. Yeah. Talk about how good he's been. Yeah. Talk about where he's brought you from. Yeah. Don't have to always gossip. Don't have to always complain. I mean, I found myself saying this morning, I'm a little tired, but the Lord woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. And the Bible says that he was walking, as they were walking down the Emmaus Road, talking about the goodness of Jesus and how he had died on the cross for their sins, that Jesus came and walked with them. If you want God to walk with you, praise him. If you want God to talk with you, Tell somebody about the goodness of God. You want God to heal your body? Remember how he healed you the last time you were sick. Remember how he brought you through when your mama died and you didn't think you were going to make it, but the word became true. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Do I have anybody that God's been good to you and you don't mind 
giving him praise. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits towards me. I will bless the Lord. I'm done. Not just sometimes, but I'll bless him at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth because I've tasted and I can tell you that the Lord is good.